I just uh, finished a Spike Lee film called Old Boy with J uh, Josh Brolin, and uh, it had the world's, uh, like, it was a movie that was, um, it was just a bad movie, but it had the world's most uncomfortable twist of all time. Like, it really, at the end of the movie, you felt, like, dirty for watching it, even though you had nothing to do with the making of it or the reason that they, it was like an M. Night Shyamalan twist, but imagine that mixed with uh, Deliverance and Ned Beatty uncomfortableism. You know what I'm saying? Is that how it is? It's cue up the banjos for this one, sir. Uh, I'll spoil it for you if you don't care. Do you think you'll ever watch the movie Old Boy? Old Boy, probably not. Okay. Uh, Old Boy is a Spike Lee movie that looked, they did a two minute trailer, and it's a classic example of the preview making the movie look ridiculously awesome. And then you get the, the movie, and then the best two minutes of the movie were all in the preview, and everything yeah. else was like, Oh, okay, this is just good marketing, but this movie sucks a dick. You know, you've been a victim of that before, right? Oh, I've seen worse where they use, you know, good clips in the in the trailer and then edit them out of the movie completely. <laughs> it's They're just I, not even there. <laughs> I uh I've 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 never had that problem, but that's kind of what I that's kind of why I didn't go see Anchorman 2. Because uh, I thought Anchorman 2, as many previews as they had and as funny as they were, I was like, there's no way this movie's going to be anything but a letdown. There's no way. Um, I have heard that's pretty good, though. The Anchorman 2 is supposed to be? That's what I've heard. Again, I don't watch yeah. movies recently. I, I, I tried. I tried severely to go to that movie. And it just never, never worked out for me. Couldn't couldn't get it in the schedule? You just kept missing it? Right. When well, I was in a small town with a one showing a day kind of theater. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you about Old Boy. Let me ruin this movie for you because you got to. I want. I, I'm. I would love to hear your reaction to it. So the movie is about a guy who is uh, the first. Basically, the first 15 minutes, he's a raging alcoholic. He just gets drunk and he's like screaming in the streets at people and he's like, "Do you have any vodka?" And uh, and then he like hits on this guy's wife, who's a client of his, and he want he says, "Do you want to go to my hotel room and do eight balls?" And uh, he's just like like a crazy. Yeah, like eight balls. That's how he pro he propositions this guy's wife. Not like, hey, I thought we had something going on. It was like, hey, he grabs her leg and he says, let's go to my hotel room and do some eight balls. That's how <laughs> he he comes on to her. And then the like husband. What's that? I'm like a good Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> So, so then he he comes out and, uh, and and the husband catches him. Husband slaps him in the face. He loses the deal. His life is gonna fall apart. So he just goes on a drinking binge. And he has a two year old daughter at the time, and he has an ex wife. And but he's like a bad dad. He doesn't pay attention to his kid, and he and basically hates his ex wife. Right. So this is happening. He's in the streets and he's yelling vodka. Does anyone have any vodka? About that time, a lady shows up with a yellow umbrella, walks up to him, and we see him pass out. He wakes up in a hotel room, and in the hotel room, he realizes that he is uh, locked in there. Like, it's there's no windows, the doors are locked, and somebody just slides a tray under the door for him. And that's what he lives off of for 20 years, locked in a hotel 20, room. 20 years? 20 years. Locked in a hotel room. The, the maids don't let him out? Yeah, it's like, yeah, well, now there's this one scene. So everything's locked like he's in a prison, but it looks like a motel room. And he has like the cable TV and he has like the little hotel soaps and it's really weird. But there's this, there's this opening where they would, where the hotel door would be, where they open the thing and they slide a food tray under every day, right? Well, it's this like really, a jail cell. Yeah, exactly like a jail cell. And there's this one scene where he goes to talk to the person that puts the food thing under, and he slides his head up under the door, and he's like, please, let me out. Why am I in here? Please let me out. And the guy just starts kicking him in the face. Well, like, yeah, yeah. Just playing this guy locked in the room? Yeah, the 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 guy in the room is got his head out of the hole, and he gets oh. the tray, and he's just getting kicked in the face, telling him to get back in your hole, sir. No, who who is playing the who is the actor? Oh, Josh Brolin. This is the guy from No Country for Old Men, and uh, also he was in uh, True Grit as the bad guy. If you saw either one of those movies, uh, oh, I mean, I've seen them. Here's one you might know. Okay. Do you remember yeah, the yeah. really awful Jonah Hex movie? 
Yes, I, no, I got his face right here. Okay, cool. You found Josh Brolin. Googling. Yep. Okay, that's Josh Brolin. That's the guy that was in this movie, and his head is under the door, and he gets kicked back and told to get back in his hole. And uh, so it just gets crazier over 20 years. But the whole 20 year imprisonment is only about half the movie. And there's this one scene where he makes friends with a rat and the rat has babies and he's like caring to the rat and the babies. And the next thing you know, uh, the babies disappear and the rat disappears. And under the door, they slide a steaming hot tray of uh, freshly prepared. Rats. Yeah. Rat and rat babies just right there. And that's like the last straw. He's screaming. He's crying. He passes out. That's after that's 20 years in this motel room. He wakes up in a trunk in the middle of a soccer field. Okay. And he busts out of the trunk and he realizes he's free again after 20 years. And he sees the lady with the yellow umbrella runs up to her. She says, leave me alone. These football soccer players come up to him and they're like, leave the lady alone. And so he like kills all the soccer players in this really weird ninja style. Yeah, because he learned. Like the people. Yeah, I <laughs> know. No, dude, it's crazy. It's like every. Remember that scene in Kill Bill where it was he Uma Thurman. A ninja yes, and do you, locked in the hotel. Yes, and do you know how he became a ninja? A, a shadow boxing. I don't know. Watching Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon, over and over again on the motel TV. He learned. <laughs> He learned like the more he learned the martial arts watching Bruce Lee center the dragon in the hotel while he's carrying to his rat babies. Okay. So he gets out, he goes, uh, so every scene, imagine every fight scene is that scene in kill bill with Uma Thurman, where she's got one sword and she's up against the crazy 88s. You remember that scene? Yeah. Yeah. That's every fight scene in this movie, every single fight scene in this movie. So uh, he he uh, kills the soccer players, the whole soccer team, waste them all, and then he has to find out. Uh, he gets a phone call. Have, Go ahead. Does he have a sword? Uh, no, he doesn't have a sword. This is all hand to hand combat. All hand to hand combat. He's a badass. Yeah, he's a badass dude. And uh, but what's weird is the way that they film these kung fu scenes is uh, the director Spike Lee tried to make them look like a kung fu movie. But the rest of the movie, he didn't make it look like a kung fu movie. So it, it's like uh, disjointed and kind of uncomfortable. It's like one second you are like in just a regular movie. The next second, you know, the camera pans back. It looks like a 1970s movie and the action is going. It's very uncomfortable. It's very. And then as soon as it's done, back to regular movie. It's, I'm telling you, dude, it's weird. Well, I'll tell you what. Josh Brolin must be an amazing actor. <laughs> from uh, just transitioning from scene to scene or what? No, no, because uh, yesterday he confessed to, to heroin use. Oh, did he really? According to Fox News and The Guardian. Okay, so now that you know that about him, you're right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase it. On the line chart, he's right under <laughs> he's right under Philip Seymour Hoffman as far as brilliant acting. And uh, he's pretty good in the movie. But uh, but the scenes with the kung fu are, are just don't fit in with the rest of the movie. So uh, let me try to get past that part. So now he's on a search to find. Um, he gets a phone call. He's got an iPhone that he has placed on his body um, that he like wakes up with. But keep in mind, the last time he was around was 1993. He gets an yeah, iPhone. There was no phone. He thinks nothing of this iPhone. He's using it like uh, like he like he was like a born in 2002. He is using this iPhone. No, pro it's not even like oh, this is a magical phone device in my hand. What is this? It's like he's surfing the internet. He's googling people. He's trying to find his captors, and he's using the iPhone like no questions asked. Doesn't even have a learning curve. So I seen it on TV. You see the preview for this, or you see the people using the iPhone? I'm just saying he's seen the iPhone on TV. Oh, well, maybe that's yeah, a good I mean, point. He, he became a ninja from TV. Why can't he learn how to use an iPhone? <laughs> this is a fair point. If you're right, if you can learn any, the other, Oh, the other thing he watches in the motel room, I forgot to tell you about is he watches a lot of Suzanne Summers, like doing that thing where you remember where she had that thigh master thing and she would right. work her thighs. That's the other thing that he watches a lot. It's like enter the dragon. And then Suzanne Summers working out with a thigh master. That's the only two things that he watches in 20 years. So uh, he's on a search. He gets a phone call on his iPhone from the guy that's like the bad guy in the movie. 
And the guy is like, there are two questions you need to answer. And if you answer them, I will, uh, you know, tell you where your daughter is. Why did I, uh, who am I? And why did I put you in prison for 20 years? Those are the two questions. Okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on. go ahead. Let's, I, I want to make a game out of this. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So I guess 20 question style. Like, is this guy a cop? No. Okay. Like anything like police related law enforcement. Um, no, he's not related in any way to any kind of official law enforcement. Did he steal some money? Is he a criminal? I'm going to say other than imprisoning Josh Brolin for 20 years in a motel room and paying for it to happen. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about Josh Brolin. Josh uh, Brolin is a cop. Josh Brolin is a criminal. I'm no. trying to figure out why the guy kidnapped him. Josh Brolin's not a cop. Josh Brolin's not a criminal. Uh, no, 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 he's just a drunk. That's it. Just a drunk office worker. So no to both counts. And there's no uh, DWI, fatal accidents. So. No. Hmm. So why would this guy be looking for him? All right, so let me, can I give you a hint? Yeah, we'll keep moving forward then because I can't figure it out. Okay, just interrupt me when you have guesses then. So you know you know the two questions, right? Who am I and why did I imprison you? Those are the two questions, okay? All right. Shout out whenever you've got a, a thought. All so right. uh, so then he goes and Josh Brolin finds his old pal from high school that's now like a bartender and he hooks up with him and they're going to help find out who this guy is and all that stuff. And well, along the so is, is anybody concerned that he's been missing for 20 years? That's the weird thing. His partner or his bartender friend who knows that he uh, he's been missing for 20 years doesn't really ask a lot of questions. He's just like, oh, hey, good to see you again. Come on in. And then Josh Brolin. In a while. Yeah, exactly. And then Josh Brolin tells him the story and he's like, that's crazy. We need to find out who this guy is instead of like okay, I shouldn't be hanging out. This could be dangerous. Why am I involved? He's just like, well, that's a wild story. What, what a crazy 20 years you've had. Let me get in on this. Yeah, let me join right in with you so I can go to jail for 20 years. Um, so that's one character. And then the only other character you need to know about is there's this girl that becomes friends with Josh Brolin. Remember how he killed the whole football team and was chasing the girl with the umbrella? Well, right. he got interrupted when he was doing that by a nurse who, uh, cause basically the girl with the umbrella handed her umbrella to a homeless man. He chased a homeless man with the umbrella to like a blood drive for homeless people. And this lady who's a nurse gets out and she's like, listen, I don't know who you are, but you look like you need help. Here's my business card. Give me a call if you ever need anybody to talk to. And that was it. And so then he calls this lady and she is like his, it's like the bartender friend, this lady and him trying to figure out what happened. So that's it. That's the whole premise of the movie. So you would think that there would be a lot of mystery and a lot of clues that they would need to solve, right? Yeah, yeah. so you're halfway through the movie now. Yeah, it's, we're halfway and through the movie. you have zero clue why any of this has happened. Exa this is all build up. Ex it, exactly. This whole thing is all build up. And it all c comes together with this climax that makes you uncomfortable. And Was so the aliens? <laughs> they they have the Malaysian plane and they have Josh Brolin in a motel room somewhere. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't aliens. So um, that'll be another answer to one of your questions. No aliens are involved. Um, but uh, so that you think all these clues he'd have to find. What he really does is he said under the door, what they slid him every day in the hotel room to eat wasn't prison food. It was takeout from a Chinese restaurant. So he just goes like the Chinese restaurant had the name dragon in the title. They gave me dumplings. And so he goes to all the Chinese restaurants in New York city or wherever it's supposed to be. And he eats their dumplings and then he tastes the right ones and he knows where to go. Somehow he knows now. So he waits there. Somebody comes to get taken. I'm serious, dude. This is like, this really is the movie. No question. This is ridiculous. So okay. He, so he, now we have a random takeout leading us back to the bad guys. Exactly. That, and, that he scoured the city for. Yep. And, and uh, he's going to chase down everybody that takes food out of there. That's Well, you would think, right? No. He takes the first person who comes to get a large amount of takeout. He's, he just he doesn't even do any research. He just sees the first person who comes to get like four bags. And the guy that goes, uh, the usual, Tony, put it on my bill. And so Josh Brolin okay. just looks at him and knows, like, this is the guy. The first guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I've tasted those Wranglers before. 
for yeah. rolling that one. He smelled him or something. Was, somehow, yeah. he, somehow he knew. So he gets a hammer. And he chases this guy down. And he gets like in the back of the van. He hops in the back of the van. This guy's taking the takeout back to the place. And they get into a garage. And uh, without, again, any investigation whatsoever, before the guy can get the takeout out of the van, Josh Brolin bashes his head in with a hammer. Just brains on the floor. <laughs> no, who are you? Who do you work for? Just fuck you for buying Chinese food. <laughs> yes. No questions. He did no clues. No problem solving skills. Just this must be it because they got takeout from this Chinese is restaurant. He the criminal, then that's the next. Uh, is he the criminal? Is he? Is, is all this in his own head? Oh no no no! So it's not. That's not the twist. It's not him playing this up. So no to that one. So, okay. So yeah. he bashes the guy in the head with the hammer, takes the takeout, but the takeout is so big that it masks his face as he's walking to deliver it. So they let him, they buzz him in, they bring him in. Hey, did you bring the people their pet food or something like that? And uh, and then what it is, it's Samuel L. Jackson who runs this uh, motel prison operation. I'm going to have to see this. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell me Jackson, wasn't it? Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. But he's in it and he has this weird, like, blonde mohawk that he has shaved into his head and uh but he he's not the bad guy he works for the bad guy he runs this motel that is for people who pay him enough money to imprison people no questions asked um the health inspector that never shows up in 20 years <laughs> there's several plot holes along the way of this thing yeah there's no health inspector there's no code inspector uh they just have this motel that they run filled with imprisoned people samuel it's jackson is blonde hours a day yeah. the average man it's not like you have the, the random tourist family showing up and like i'd like a room for the week yeah <laughs> they I, they don't have any of that no you're asking already you're already asking too many questions that, that make sense for this movie because <laughs> then basically what happens is uh josh brolin threatens to kill samuel l jackson unless he tells him who uh kid who paid to have him imprisoned and uh then he goes to start you think he's going to cut his throat with a box cutter because he gets out a box cutter and he draws lines down his throat but instead he starts cutting out sections of skin because what he said is he wants to cut out enough sections of skin that he can rip off Samuel L. Jackson's head with his bare hands. That was his objective. And the skin's holding it back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he's, okay. he's just, so anyway, Samuel L. Jackson finally says, okay, I'll tell you. And then he tells him who the guy is. And then uh, right before he kills Samuel L. Jackson, all of Samuel L. Jackson's uh, uh, cronies bust in and uh, again, kill Bill, the crazy 88s. He takes a hammer and he fights off like 400 people Kung Fu style and kills them all with a, a claw hammer and then goes to find this guy. So that's... Is, this guy, is the murderer Bill? It's, it's not... A, a character <laughs> similar to Bill. It, uh, it's not Bill. But uh, it's similar. So what it is, it is a, uh, it's this weird um, uh, white guy who has, from like Luxembourg, he's like some dude from like uh, Europe somewhere. And uh, uh, so what it is, is this guy was wronged. And this is what's weird about the movie. Why the guy paid to have him put in a motel was uh, made no sense at all with the rest of the story. It's like out of nowhere. Here's the storyline. So this guy went to high school with uh, Josh Brolin, and he was wronged in high school. Do you want to take some guesses as to how as to as to what he was wronged about? Like he got pinched, or they were playing the slap nut game, or <laughs> he was just a nerd got picked on because he was foreign exchange. I mean, normal high school shit, or was he like raped by J Josh Brolin? It involves his sister. It involves. His sister was raped. It involves very close. It involves family mass murder. It involves the guy from high school's dad trying to kill him and him surviving and it all being Josh Brolin's fault. Josh Brolin's dad. No, no, no. This other guy's dad. We'll call him. I can't remember his name from the movie. We'll call him Andrew Dupree. Okay. Okay. Um, so 
Josh Brolin's dad tries to kill. No, Andrew Dupree's dad. Josh Brolin. Okay, so so the the European guy. Yeah, yeah. His father tries to kill everybody. His father killed his sister, killed his mom, and tried to kill him. The European guy tried to kill the European guy, and the European guy. Josh Brolin walked by the murder scene and didn't help. What he did is Josh Brolin used to pick on the sister and he was in like he was an alcoholic from high school so he's going to this garden at their school to drink find his like vodka stash which he has stashed under a greenhouse for some reason so he goes uh, goes under the greenhouse gets the vodka bottle is drinking vodka by himself and he looks over and he sees the european guy's sister uh having sex with a guy and he's drinking and watching it and then he sees her face come down and see sh- he sees that she's having sex with an older man, like an adult man, like a grown. Right. And I think he assumes it's a professor or something. Gym so, teacher. So he tells the whole school the story, tells the whole school the story about how he saw the daughter uh, or not the daughter, but the, the sister uh, having sex with the old guy. Right. Right. So that's why this guy is after him. Now, quick aside, and then I'm going to wrap it all up nicely for you. Quick aside is, while this is all going on and Josh Brolin is figuring this out, he's developed, you remember the nurse from the homeless uh, blood drive? Yeah, yeah. He developed a romantic relationship with her, and they have been banging. They have been doing the nasty, okay? Okay. So, that's very important. That's crucial to this whole thing. So then... uh, That's, That's the European girl? No, it's not. This like is, now. but the girl is related. She is, she's involved very much so. So then Josh Brolin, who's been banging the nurse from the homeless blood drive. Then he finally encounters European guy. He traces him down and he finds him and he's got the two answers to his question so that his quest is over and the European guy will finally tell him, you know, why all why? this happened. Yeah. So. Then he finds him, and then he says, you are the guy I used to go to high school with. And you are mad at me because I ruined your uh, family. Like, I, you blame me for what happened to your family because your sister, I caught your sister. I saw her having sex. She was called a whore. And then your whole family was ashamed, and they, they, they your dad killed everyone. Yeah, he got murder faced. Exactly. That's what he says. And then he says, well, you didn't ask the very important question. Why did I let you out? Which is the most important question. So then he goes into this long monologue about how the European guy and his sister, it wasn't actually gym teacher she was having sex with. It was, guess who? Daddy. That's right. It was her father. And... Also, her father was having sex with the guy to her, his son, European guy. Now, you would think that if his dad, he would blame his dad or be angry at his dad, right? No, he had a special relationship with his dad and he got mad when Josh Brolin started talking crap on his father. He's like, my father was a great man and you will never understand the relationship that I had with my father or my sister had with my father. You will never understand that. So again, I ask you this question, why did I let you out? And then we see the big reveal. He says, you never asked who your daughter was, did you? And then he plays a video clip of his daughter growing up, right? Of Josh Brolin's daughter growing up. His daughter turns out to be, do you want to take a Uh, guess? Oh, yeah, the nurse. The nurse, who he has been (laughs) stooping for uh, the whole movie. So then he cries. He kills the European guy. He goes back to Samuel L. Jackson ashamed pays Samuel L. Jackson to put him back in the motel prison, writes his daughter a letter that says, you'll never understand why I had to disappear, but I'm ashamed of myself and had to go. And then the final scene is him imprisoning himself back into the motel room for having an incestuous relationship with his daughter throughout the entire movie. Yeah, special movie there. (laughs) I don't know. It's... I'm, I'm I'm flipping through the uh, screenshots of it now. I was gonna cheat and steal some ideas, but <laughs> it does look like a crazy movie. 
All I could think is like M. Night Shyamalan, that little cartoon from Robot Chicken, where he comes out and goes, what a twist! <laughs> and I was so uncomfortable. And I had talked for weeks because I knew this movie was coming out on DVD. I told my wife, I was like, we're going to get it. We're going to watch it. You're going to be blown away by this movie. Greatest movie ever made. And then that's how, that's what it ends up. That's the final two minutes of the movie. Oh, you've been stooping your daughter the whole movie. Uh, now you know how, why I loved my daddy. And uh, now you know how I feel. And then he imprisons himself back in the motel. And then I was like, well, that's the last time I get to pick the movie at Red Fox. Now it's nothing but chick flicks for you. <laughs>